Previously, we talked about the scenario of an ideal process. Consider a resource or workstation equipped with one machine. Let's say it takes three minutes to process one unit of product or flow unit. The ideal scenario is it always takes three minutes for this resource to receive one flow unit of input and creates one flow unit of output. Such a smooth and constant process flow is rarely feasible in practice. There are two key reasons why the smooth process flow is interrupted. First is the setups or changeovers. The other is the variability in processing times or quality. We will discuss the variability and quality issues in later chapters. Setup is to prepare a device, machine, process, or system for it to be ready to function or accept a job. One reason why we need setup or changeover is that the machine processes multiple products or components. When the machine is to switch to processing another product or component, some adjustment or changeover is needed. Even if a machine processes only one item, there will probably be scheduled maintenance time or downtime. Setup time or changeover time eats up machine's capacity. Consider a machine that makes both part A and part B. The next workstation will assemble one unit of A and two units of B into one unit of finished product. A reasonable production process for this machine will be like this. Set up making X units of A, set up again making two X units of B. Then repeat this sequence of setups and production runs. This repeating sequence is called a production cycle. One production cycle occurs immediately after another. All production cycles are the same in the sense that they have the same setups and production runs. This process is called a batch production process because parts are made in batches. A batch is simply a collection of flow units. In our example, one flow unit consists of one unit of part A and two units of part B because we need one part A and two part B to assemble into a one unit of finished product. The batch size in our example is thus X. Every production cycle will have the same batch size. Given the batch size, we can compute the corresponding capacity like this. Capacity for a given batch size is equal to batch size divided by the length of production cycle. The length of production cycle is the sum of setup time per cycle and processing time per cycle. The processing time per cycle is equal to batch size times flow unit processing time. And we can write down the formula using the notations you see on this PowerPoint slide. A few remarks on the formula for computing capacity for giving batch size. First, for every different batch size, there's a different level of capacity. Second, capacity increases in batch size. However, it does not mean the larger the batch size, the better. When you increase your batch size, the inventory increases accordingly. We will address this issue later in EOQ model. Lastly, we typically look for the batch size that leads to the lowest inventory without affecting flow rate. That is to say, capacity C is equal to the flow rate R. As a result, we can derive the formula for computing the recommended batch size based on the flow rate. 
the recommended batch size is equal to flow rate R times setup time S divided by 1 minus R times flow unit process time P. Next, we are going to look at our first example. Metal window boxes are manufactured in two process steps, stamping and assembly. Each window box is made up of three pieces, the base, one part A, and two sides, two part Bs. The parts are fabricated by a single stamping machine that requires a setup time of 120 minutes whenever switching between the two part types. Once the machine is set up, the process time for each part A is one minute while the process time for each part B is only 30 seconds. Currently, the stamping machine rotates its production between one batch of 360 for part A and one batch of 720 for part B. Completed parts move from the stamping machine to the assembly only after the entire batch is complete. At the assembly, Parts are assembled manually to form the finished product. One base, part A, and two sides, two part Bs, as well as a number of small purchased components are required for each unit of finished product. Each product requires 27 minutes of labor time to assemble. There are currently 12 workers in assembly. There is sufficient demand to sell every box the system can make. Two questions. A. What is the capacity of the stamping machine? B. What batch size would you recommend for the process? Let's switch to my Excel spreadsheet to solve this problem. First of all, let's understand that in this case, one flow unit consists of one unit of part A and two units of part B. Unit processing time of part A is one minute per unit. Unit processing time of part B is 30 seconds or half a minute per unit. Because one flow unit consists of one part A and two part B, the flow unit processing time is 2 minutes per unit. Setup time is 120 minutes. But we have to be very careful. The setup time per production cycle is actually 240 minutes. In this process, the production cycle looks like this. Setup, production run for part A, setup again, and production run for part B. As a result, we have two setups in one production cycle. So setup time per production cycle is 240 minutes. Currently, the batch size is 360 flow units or 360 units of finished product. At assembly, the unit assembly time per worker is 27 minutes per unit per worker, and we have 12 workers at assembly. Now let's look at each of those two questions. First, stamping machine capacity. Let's calculate the length of production cycle first. It's equal to setup time per production cycle to 40 minutes plus batch size 360 times flow unit processing time, which is 2 minutes per unit. So the length of production cycle is 960 minutes. Capacity is equal to the batch size 360 
divided by the length of production cycle, 960. The answer to question A is stamping machine capacity is equal to 0.375 sets per minute. One set is equal to one flow unit. Next, let's look at question B. What would be the recommended batch size? Recall that we want to make capacity equal to the flow rate. In this case, flow rate R will be determined by the assembly capacity. So let's compute assembly capacity first. All right, it takes one worker 27 minutes to make one unit of product. So for one worker, the flow rate is 1 divided by the unit assembly time. But keep in mind, we have 12 workers at the assembly. Therefore, the flow rate or the assembly capacity will be 12 divided by 27, which is 0.44 sets per minute. Once we get to the flow rate, we're going to use the formula to compute the recommended batch size. It's going to be equal to flow rate R times setup time. Once again, this is setup time per production cycle divided by parenthesis 1 minus flow rate again times processing time. And recall this is flow unit processing time, which is 2 minutes per flow unit in our case. Close the parenthesis, return. The final answer is 960 sets per batch. That would be our recommended batch size. 